But God keeps his promises, that's for sure. And I know I don't always keep my promises, but God, he, he keeps his promises. God makes promises and he keeps them. Sometimes we have to wait. Yeah. We have to wait. And also he thinks, and of the promises, I mean, he knows what's best for us. So, I mean, maybe we're looking like, I want a motorcycle, but he knows that may not be good for me or something, or, or he, I may want something that really isn't going to be beneficial for me, but he ultimately acts, he, he gives us what we need. Did, did you ever want a motorcycle? I never really thought about it, but I'm just, okay. but it, it could be anything. I thought maybe you were a, a disappointed at one time in your life all right, and didn't get what you wanted. It's a good thing that God doesn't give us always what we want. And that's why yeah. here we're going to talk about prayer and God's will. Yeah. Now, here's something I want you to meditate on and think about. I'm going to put some parts of a long sentence up here, one phrase at a time. When the will of anyone is different from God's will or opposed to God's will or indifferent to God's will, there is a reason enough for, for prayer. And what do you think that prayer will be? Help me the Holy me. Spirit would enter their heart and, and change inside them what is opposed to God or indifferent or different from what God's will is. Yes. And what would the prayer be? Let it thy, yeah, thy will be done. When the will of anyone is different, we ought to pray, thy will be done. I know my will is opposed to your will. Lord, change me because it cannot be that you need to change your will to fit my whims and desires and wishes. When the will of God, when my will is indifferent to God's will, I don't really care what God wants. I really have a problem with my relationship to God. And I need to pray just one prayer. Thy will be done. And that will silence my anxieties and, uh, and some of my um, longings that God has not given me, thy will be done. If you look at Jesus when he was praying at Mount Gethsemane and about before the, uh, his uh, trials, I mean, being, being uh, you know, put on the cross, um, he and his prayers to God, I mean, not my will, but yours will be done. And it's, and he's just such, such a great example. That is the best example. Thank you, John. Yeah. Are there any other thoughts on, on this uh, rather long sentence, but I wanted you to see the, that the will of man is often so different and opposed and indifferent to God's will. As you look at our nation today and what is tearing so many people apart and giving distress and anxiety and pain and suffering and loss, it is in large part because the will of man is opposed to what God wants. So we have reason to pray for our nation and its leaders and those who follow Lord, I cannot know what you want, but I know what you want is right. Thy will be done. <clears throat> Sometimes people think God needs to be told what to do. <laughs> what kind of a God do you have who needs to be told what to do? Any other thoughts on this? We are... We, I mean, we, what we do in life and I mean, we, we've done, I mean, we try to learn things, we try to do things, but God created the universe and how, we, it's just, it's just, it's just amazing what he's done. Um, 
I'd like to add something that I've always been a person that looked back and I said, well, that will be done because that's what happened, you know, whether I wanted it or not. And a lot of times I'm, I'm trying to, to now look at the point of, of knowing that maybe I want something different than God wanting. I don't know if I can know that completely, but I do accept thy will be done. All right. Anyone else? Well, let's go on. There's much material that we have this morning. Why do we need commands to pray? Well, sometimes we need reminders that um, we're not the ones in control, that um, we, we need to ask for help. How often do you need help during your day? Multiple times. <laughs> yes, hi, Pastor. I'm, I'm there. I can see. I'm glad you're here, Carola. Thank you, thank you. We can hear you. We're asking the question. I, everybody I've tried for half an hour. I'm glad that you finally made it. Now, why, thank do, you. why do we need commands to pray? I'm asking everyone. Well, it gives us the right direction that we should um, pray in. Uh, we can easily, I think, get off the uh, get off the path of truth uh, and and what we should be praying for. God, God pretty well lays it out, and He lays it out especially in the Lord's Prayer for us. Everything that we need is comprehended in those seven petitions. Mm -hmm. Everything. In the large catechism, where Martin Luther expands to a great deal what he has taught in the small catechism, and as you may remember from our study of a couple of years ago, he wrote the large catechism for those who were teaching the small catechism. The large catechism may sound like a series of sermons, and indeed it was. Luther would preach on the catechism, and the content of his, of his sermon would be part of the large catechism. So in the large catechism, the large teaching device, Luther reminds us of other reasons to pray. If we do not pray regularly, he says, we become more inept at praying. Think about the word inept. Why is that? What does inept mean? Pastor, I might say that, uh, well, inept to me means uh, maybe becoming complacent or you're not being successful. Uh, you got to practice just like on anything if you want to play the game. And praying, you need to do that. Uh, you need to practice. And even if it's uh, not perfect, God will hear and, and abide with what you're saying. And it's important to, to do that. I, I need to practice more myself. Can you think of something in ordinary life you are inept at doing? Anything in life at all? Uh, not, I don't know if it's inept, but I'm, I definitely don't exercise enough and I don't eat well enough. Um, well, let's think of a skill. Skill, yeah. I'm not real good on the computer. <laughs> so you would say you're inept at computer work. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say being a retired nurse, not practicing nursing. I become very inept about, you know, medications and all the practices that are out there because you aren't uh, doing them um, on a daily basis like you used to be doing. Uh, all right. <laughs> Skill level. Now, how about um, 
something as simple as um, uh, chopping an onion into small pieces so that you can use the pieces uh, in cooking or as a condiment. You can easily uh, cut yourself and not do a very good job. You're inept at the simple job of cutting an onion. Mm -hmm. So when we do not pray regularly, we become unable to pray because pray, uh, praying is a, is a skill. I don't want to make it too complicated, but it's something that needs practice. So do you agree with that? That prayer yes. is a skill that needs practice? Yes. How do you learn how to swim? You have to get in the water and do the things that you've been taught to do when you were doing it on land. You cannot learn uh, to swim without getting wet. You cannot learn to pray without praying. <laughs> and here is a simple thing that I have used myself more than once. Lord, I need help with my prayer. It's a prayer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm asking the Lord to give me a better skill, if you would use that word, to help me know how to pray as I ought. And the Lord will listen to that prayer and answer and give you help in your prayers. But start with that. If you have trouble praying, that's my question of all of us. What's keeping us from praying? I guess prioritizing time and all right, make, priority. or like a like a to do list. Uh, you should write down. Uh, I need this time to pray. I mean, it's our time. We 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 just aren't controlling our time as well, or something like that. Time management. Yeah. Not giving, not giving it the priority in your schedule. It should probably be at the very top of the list instead of at the bottom of the list at the end of the day when you fall asleep praying. <laughs> not a bad way to fall asleep, but I get your point. Yep. Uh, some people are not going to pray first thing because um, their body and their mind have not awakened yet. Um, so... I'm not going to dictate because there are no rules here. There are no rules for when and where you pray. There have been very uh, regulated practices among the monks in the, in the Dark Ages, in the Middle Ages. They prayed seven times a day. Well, I have a feeling that they prayed in between, in between those scheduled hours of prayer. Uh, there are so many things to pray about. That's true. I, I, I do a lot of driving, and there's many times I'm praying. What do you pray for, John? Well, I pray that people, I mean, if people I have offended in the past, would uh, I'd pray for them. And that I don't mess up on things, and uh, I mean, pr I pray for the safety of my path of uh, the people. I I pray for a myriad of, of things. Do you pray for um, forgiveness for that a driver that just cut you off? <laughs> yeah. There are many things that keep us from praying, and sometimes it's simply our unwillingness to bend to the will of God. Luther has more to say about prayer. The devil wants us to neglect prayer. Luther says why? Because he is well aware of what damage and harm he suffers when prayer is in proper use. All our safety and protection consist in prayer alone because we are far too weak to cope with the devil. Have you thought of that reason for prayer? Mm -hmm. We're in spiritual warfare constantly. Yes. And so when you believe that you're being attacked by the evil forces of this world, the unseen enemies, 
Lord, I need your shield. I need the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. I need you to come near to me and surround me and protect me. Luther says we must be admonished to pray and to value prayer as a great and precious thing. You know, it's really sad that we have to talk about it all in the church. But I realize that we're all in kindergarten. <laughs> we're all to be like children and in need of instruction and encouragement. Uh, we need to be uh, reminded of the promises of God. Luther has still more to say about prayer. Uh, if you permit a couple more quotations. Not vain babblings or great wordiness. What does Jesus say in Matthew 6, verse 7? He says, don't be like the unbelievers. He calls them, they're the, the Gentiles, the, the non-believing nations who heap up many words and think they will be heard because of their many words. No, pray for something definite. Put a content to your prayer. In other words, one reason to pray is that we know of a need, our needs or others' needs. If you know of a need for prayer, something comes across your mind or across your vision, or you hear something, reminds you of a need, say, Lord, that person needs your help. Please come and help. Well, that's the end of your prayer, isn't it? Right there, for that need that you see, that you hear, that you're aware of. You can pray for general things, you know, for the peace of the nation and for the healing of the corona, uh, the COVID-19 virus. You can pray in general, but when you know of someone who has that disease, you see you're praying for a particular need. This, these quotations are from the large catechism in the Book of Concord, the Tappert edition. How many of you have a to-do list? <laughs> I do. Who doesn't? Yeah. Do you literally write down a list? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wake up in the middle of the night and even add to the list sometimes. <laughs> you see, here's a to-do list. Uh -huh. has nothing on it yet. That doesn't mean I have nothing to do today, but there's a to-do list. And I find a, a, a great help in doing this. If I don't do it, some things never get done. All right. Now I'm going to add, I'm going to change this list. This is so obvious that I, I hardly need to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. So now it becomes what? A to pray list. A to pray list. Here's what I find in my, my praying. When I have a bad memory, you, you know that. Okay. Well, I find that if I don't have a list in front of me, I forget. I forget. I forget that this person needed prayer. Every Friday, we get a list from the district office of people in our district who have something hurting in their life or in the life of someone they love. So I'm inviting you to make a list. Make a list of those that are in need of prayer and add to it and subtract from it. Yeah. So that's what we're going to, uh, to enlist you to do for yourself. Uh, Christine, sometimes I don't see your hand. Just, oh. just speak up. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm really loving this to pray list. I need to do it. All right. It'll help. Yes. And it'll be in the same place, and it'll be there every day, and it'll be at a certain time if you'd like to make a time. And then you have the, the, 
should, a prayer should never uh, be a, a, a mere habit. No, not a mere habit, but it's a good habit. John, you had your hand raised. Uh, I, uh, well, one thing is one thing about list is that uh, they say the the palest ink is better than the best memory. Say that again, please. The palest ink is better than the best memory. Palest ink? The palest, like the weakest link, weakest ink, oh, oh. is still better than the best memory. Oh, okay. That's an old Chinese proverb. I didn't heard that. Yeah. All right. So, how about for prayer list? How does God move us to pray? We're going to go a little longer today. I'll tell you why another time. How does God move us to pray? Uh, when things get down in the dump, it seems um, all of a sudden we remember maybe we should pray about a situation. How Rather. does God move us to pray? Good. Anyone? Yeah. I agree. I mean, when, when we, when, when our hands are up and we, we know that we can't solve these problems and, and we definitely need his help. One of the hindrances to prayer is I think I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. And when I run into problems, I look over my shoulder and I see God looking at me. I'm being figurative now, of course. And he is saying, uh, did you really think you could do it yourself without my help? Mm. So I'm going to put something up here, how God moves us to pray. And you're all thinking along the same lines. Think about the value of adversity. The value of adversity in your life and in the life of others. Can you talk about that? Well, if we don't have challenges, then we don't know what we're capable of. If we can't um, think through how to solve it or ask for help in solving it, we learn about ourselves and we gain strength. What do you learn from adversity? Humility. Yes. <laughs> I think I think you um, you increase your faith many times by making it through um, a low time in your life uh, once you get through on the other side, and uh, the other value that really comes from it is the able to be able to share with other believers who might be going through the same thing in this world because sometimes so many people think they're all alone. Nobody else has ever had this experience. And so it gives us a wonderful testimony um, to go through that adversity once we come out the other side, God's side of it. I, I've always uh, heard of the thing, you know, purifying the gold or, or something of that sort. You, you all know that yeah. thing better. Yeah. Right. Purifying the gold, you know, burning it and whatever. That, that's in First Peter, that okay. your faith is like uh, gold that is tried, tested, uh, to find out uh, so you know it's uh, really the real thing. Chris? Yes. Thank you. Uh, the value of adversity. Pastor, I was going to say that uh, the early, early church leaders, the disciples, had a lot of pain and adversity, and it made them stronger. You could read the book of Acts, and then you read the history of the early church. Uh, Bobby, you're certainly correct. Also, uh, it's interesting, the story of Job. Adversity in his life. Yeah, but he kept up. I have, I, and I need to read the full thing, but in the end, I mean, what God told, even after Job has gone through all this stuff, and then... I guess at, at that one time, I guess he was going to complain to God. And then God told him about all the things about. Yeah, I really, really need to read that better, though. The story of Job. 
uh, my advice is uh, take your time and read a chapter a day and take a month yeah. and a half of, of plowing through it and getting everything you can. And then be careful that you don't follow the advice of those first three friends. They, yeah. they weren't uh, trained counselors and they didn't know the will of God. But that's yeah. all I'm going to say about Job this morning. I'm gonna go, let me go on to ask you to talk about some adversity or hard times, difficulty, challenge, or danger that brought prayers from your heart to God's ears. What times uh, can you remember adversity, difficulty, challenge, danger, and you just had to pray? It came out without prompting, except for the reasons for praying. I think um, when my husband died over, over 12 years ago now was what led me uh, to prayer more than I ever had before and has uh, brought me to a wonderful place. That was an adversity that now I don't think about it that much, but it's happening to everybody right and left all around me too. And uh, the prayer was prayer and was the best thing for me, learning how to pray and believing. Who else would like to, to, to share uh, one of these situations? Um, I'll share. I think when we first moved here 35 years ago, we had, um, we came down here with a, a franchise with a cleaning business and uh, um, you know, my husband always wanted to ha have a business. Um, and I think uh, we came into it very unwise uh, financially. It was a financial, um, real became a financial struggle. We came in with too much debt and uh, just, we were not good managers. We found out as a couple, we didn't do well together as uh, managing a business. And uh, the thing that was wonderful is we uh, also joined Trinity at the same time and got into a Bible study group that prayed for us all the time because, I mean, we really had some struggles. We didn't know where the rent was coming from a couple times that first year. Um, and then, you know, it, we were able to sell the business and both resort back to um, careers that we were familiar with and we know, knew how to do. Um, but during that period of time, we learned an awful lot about finance. It led us to some people within the church that were good about doing it. Um, sometimes um, in, in um, marriages, spouses don't listen well to one another about taking advice, but getting that advice from an outside person um, they will listen. And th those were all prayers that were being said during that period of time. And uh, we came through it really well. And it financially put our house in order the correct way, according to the way the Lord wanted it. So. Good example. Good example. We sometimes get in over our heads. Mm -hmm. and the water is eight foot deep and I can't swim and I don't know how I can stand mm -hmm. any more water in my mouth and my nose and I'm going to drown and I am afraid. Now, fear can be a great motivator when we know that we cannot stand on our own strengths. Share some of the great needs and sufferings of those around us whose cries come to us I think right now we, we can see that there's great needs and great sufferings of the people who have this coronavirus. There's many of them. I don't know of anyone personally or even close to me who's had it, thankfully, but you hear it on the news and you see it and hear it all the time. What about the people who have lost their business? Lost their businesses, people that have lost their jobs. Because of those businesses, um, I think, um, you know, uh, there's such debate now, as Bobby knows about the school, the pros and the cons, but there has been things that children have suffered from. They've suffered from receiving mental health assistance uh, and all those types of things uh, in the program, um, as, well as, as well as individuals. Some people are even losing their homes. Um, 
and have nowhere to go. They don't have food. <coughs> I think in the ending prayer, we should pray for them all, really. Seriously. Absolutely. Let's, let's uh, remind me to do that. Yeah. So here's my question, and it's subjective, not asking you to really answer out loud, but just to consider within yourself and your relationship to the Lord, in the midst of all the adversities that are going on right now, are we a channel or a hindrance? to bring their needs to God so that he hears. You cannot ever lean on this false devil-made excuse. Well, others are praying, so I don't have to. I don't know any verse in the Bible that allows you to say, um, I guess my prayer is not needed. You, you never know that. You, it's never true. Lord, hear my prayer. If you went through the Bible and went through all of the prayers of the Bible and all the times that people were in hurt, God's people prayed. They have always prayed. Remember the list I gave you last week. How does God move us to pray? I'm still on that question today. Number one, he promises. Someone read Psalm 91 verse 15. When he calls to me, I will answer him. It's very simple, isn't it? When he calls, I will answer. And you will find in the Bible many <laughs> promises to hear your prayers. Number two, he gives us the words to pray. Someone read Luke 11, verse 1. Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And what did he teach them? The Lord's Prayer. Yes. Did you know it is never called the Lord's Prayer in the Bible? No. Why is it called the Lord's Prayer? He, he created it. He created it. Created he taught it. it. He said, when you pray, say, Our Father. We're not studying the Lord's Prayer right now, but there is where you'll find it. Where else can you find it in the Bible? Pop quiz. Where is the Lord's Prayer recorded in the Bible? All right, you know one answer. In Luke 11, where's the other place? Hmm? Sorry, time's up. Nobody wins today. <laughs> it's in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6. And then the third reason to pray, that the, first, the third motivation for prayer, I should say, is his encouragement to pray. What did Jesus say in Luke 18? And he, and he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always pray and not lose heart. What does it mean to lose heart? To kind of give up. Yeah. So don't lose heart. I'm giving you an encouragement to pray. And he taught him a parable about a woman who was uh, seeking justice from a judge who wouldn't listen to her. <laughs> and finally he gave in and said, oh, I'm getting tired of this woman coming to me. And he, he gave her justice. How does God move us to pray? Pastor, don't you have any other questions this morning? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's time for you to talk a little bit. Have you had an experience that helped you realize how very much the Lord loves to hear you pray? Maybe you've already done that this morning. What helped you realize how much the Lord loves to hear you pray? Answers. When you found an answer, tell, tell us more about that. Well, or relief. Let me put it that way. Answers or relief from your... Right. Yeah. 
So when you receive an answer to prayer, it becomes a reason to pray more. Yes. Another question. How does the witness of other believers' experiences with answered prayer move you to pray? Hmm. Has anyone ever told you that they had a difficulty and they prayed and the Lord answered and they wanted to tell you about that answered prayer? Yeah. You don't have to say their name. I think um, um, going, back, going back to when we first moved here and we were in this Bible class, one of the things with our uh, prayer list was, uh, you know, we dated when the prayer list was um, made, and we also dated it when it was answered, which was really big too, because it gave us an idea. Some were answered within the next week. Some took months. Some took even a couple years because our group went for a year and a half. In that so, so um, it gave us encouragement. Too bad Alex isn't coming. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Well, God's more Pastor, Go sometimes adversity is. Uh, you know, trying to deal with the new technology as we're going through these COVID times, even in Zoom meetings and having background noises. It might be helpful to have people mute when they're not speaking. Uh, what? We, we always we say that. I understand, but I don't uh, think that. No, I don't think no. But I can say to you all, if there's background noise, you can mute yourself for the time being. I don't know who it is. It's Carola. Yeah. Carola. Uh, we can help her off screen another time. I'm going to close this. We, we ran a little bit late and uh, we started uh, way late in this Bible study, which is about uh, prayer. And I hope that this is of help to you, not only the scripture that we're studying, but also your witness to each other. And as someone suggested earlier on, we're going to close with a prayer for those who are hurting because of COVID-19 and because of the great suffering that has resulted. It is not a small thing. It is a great thing. And a very disturbing thing that our our time. It did rain a little bit anyway, so this is where we didn't play. Yeah. Uh, one question: I did buy some macaroni salad. So let us pray. Oh okay, God in heaven, hear our prayer for those who are hurting, for those who are worried, for those who are living in fear that they will get the virus. Grant common sense from your wisdom for those who follow and those who lead, so that we will not be confused by varying and differing directions, but will be cautious in all of our dealings with people, so that we will not give what we have nor receive illness from others. Yes. And give us patience now yes. as we await your deliverance from uh, this worldwide plague, which you have allowed by your your grace and your purposes which are beyond our, our knowledge or seeing. Hear us pray, O oh Lord, for those who are hurting, those who are healing, and those who are bringing as doctors and medical teams the various forms of healing that come. Hear us pray with all of our heart together. And at the end of our prayer through Jesus Christ, we utter the word that means, so be it. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. It is good to see you all and to know that you are involved not only in studying prayer, but that you are. God be with you till we meet again, Pastor Larson, Trinity Lutheran Church, Delray Beach, Florida. Thank you for being here. Bye bye now.